guys, welcome back to my channel. I have myself a little helper who's just decided to stick around for this video. Now, because I ran the marathon only four days ago, well that was short lived, wasn't it? <laughs> Help done for the day. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now, I only ran the marathon four days ago and I sprained my ankle during that event. So, I have decided that today I'm gonna film what I call a sit down video because that means that I get to rest my ankle a little bit more. Now, today's video is one that lots of you guys have been requesting since I filmed the unboxing video of this bag and it is my review of my Celine box bag. Now just a little bit of information on the bag before I get started with my pros and cons. So this is the Celine box bag in the medium size. The colour is camel, that's the official Celine colour and the leather that I decided to buy this in is called liege which means it has a slight texture as you might be able to see. I bought the bag pre-owned off eBay, now I'd just like to say that I would not advise buying designer items, bags, shoes, whatever it is, anything designer that needs some sort of authentication process unless you are A, experienced in buying designer goods and B, unless you are absolutely certain that the item is authentic. I did a lot of research before buying this bag, including hunting down the seller and stalking them on Instagram. So it is just my biggest top tip to be very, very wary, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you guys this, but to be very wary when buying bags off eBay. Um, now, because I bought this secondhand, I did get it for quite, I was gonna say bargain, it's a lot of money. I bought this for 1,750 pounds, which I know is a crazy amount of money, especially for a handbag. However, this bag is still currently in production and it retails for 2,850. Now, it said it was used on the listing. However, as you might have seen in the unboxing video, I checked it over bag was basically brand new it just didn't have all the little like wrappers over the hardware and stuff but there were no marks no visible signs of wear at all so essentially I was starting off with a brand new bag now as usual with all of my handbag review videos I have concocted a list of my pros and cons after having used the bag so I'm going to start off with my pros pro number one it's beautiful <laughs> And I know that might be a really lame pro, but it's quite a prominent one, to be honest with you. Now, there was a comment on the unboxing video. In fact, there were a few comments along the same kind of lines that essentially said, for that amount of money, that bag is so boring. And a few other people said, there's not even a logo on there. That's so ridiculous. Okay, now this is just a difference of opinion, guys, and also a difference in taste. For me, I am not all about the logo. I like to invest my money, especially when it's a large chunk of money like this, in classics. Call them basic, call them boring, if you will, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And me, personally, I don't like bells and whistles. I don't really fancy having studs or sequins or really big sort of garish logos like most of the Italian brands have. It's not my cup of tea. If it's your cup of tea, great. But for me, I just wanted something that was classic, versatile, and easy to fit in with my existing wardrobe. And this does just that job. Pro number two is that it's practical for my lifestyle. Now I did want to say that it's just practical. However, there is a caveat to that point and that is that it's for my lifestyle. This is not gonna be practical for everyone's lifestyle. If you're one of those women that carries around so much stuff in your bag, maybe you need a big tote bag because you carry lots of stuff you know, for work, folders or laptop or things like that. Maybe you're a mum and you've got lots of other bits and bobs that you need to carry around for your kids. 
it might not be the most practical bag, especially for this amount of money. However, for me, I carry not a lot of stuff around on a daily basis. So I do actually have some bits and bobs in here at the moment, which I have been carrying around in the bag. So I'm gonna open that up. Now, first of which is my lip balm, which is just an EOS, I think this is an SPF lip balm. Bit of an awkward shape to be carrying around in a bag. Um, but this bag, as you can see, the depth of it is a decent size. So I've got no problems fitting in my lip balm. So lip balm, check, throw that on the floor. Next up, phone. Yes, this is uh, an iPhone X, although I'm sure you'll be able to judge from the size of the bag, even if you had a much larger phone, for example, a Google Pixel Plus maybe, or an iPhone Plus, there'd be no problems with fitting that inside the bag. So iPhone X, yes. Now, next is, I don't actually have a wallet, I just have a card holder, which update from my last bag review, I finally have a new card holder and it is from Mulberry. I bought it from Vista Village. You might have seen that in one of my vlogs. I can't remember what it was, but it was for Debs' birthday. We went to Vista, bought myself a new card holder and actually the color, it's more of a gray this, like a gray mock rock, but it goes quite nice with all my other neutrals. So card holder there. I never carry cash around, so I have no cash. Um, I normally have my keys in here, which are quite bulky, but they are currently inside because I always take them out when I come in. And then the only other thing that I would carry around with me would potentially be a vlog camera. So if you did have, perhaps you're not a vlogger, but maybe you are, I don't know, going on a city break or something, or you just like to carry a camera around with you to snap all those interesting things in life, or perhaps maybe you've got a film camera that's a similar sort of size, um, then there is no problem with fitting this in one of the larger compartments inside the bag. So for me, essentially all of my daily requirements, my daily essentials, if you will, fit perfectly within this bag and I have room to spare. If perhaps I'm going shopping and I wanna fit in like a rolled up canvas carrier bag, I can pop that in there, there's plenty of room. Um, there are a few compartments in here, I showed you guys before, a little tour of the bag. So we've obviously got these two open flap situations up here. I suppose you could slide your phone in there if you really wanted to. I just normally just dump it in anywhere. Two large compartments here, and then also this zippy compartment at the back there as well, which I suppose you could use if you wanted to pop anything of like high value in there. I suppose if you didn't want anyone to nick it, you could put your phone, any cash and your wallet in there. So I can fit everything that I need on a daily basis within this bag. Therefore, for me, practicality wise, this is a 10 out of 10. Now, in the same point of being practical, I would also like to address the strap and the fact that this can be worn crossbody. I never used to be a big fan of a crossbody bag, but actually over the last maybe three, four years, that's become quite a crucial point for me when buying handbags, especially if it's this kind of shape. I generally always want them to be able to be transformed into a crossbody of some kind. And this actually works amazingly well as a crossbody. It is a little bit bigger than some of the other popular Celine bags, like perhaps the Trio, which is a very, very popular crossbody option. But for me, I just find that it works nicely. It falls in a nice place for me to sort of reach in and dig out whatever I need within the bag. For me, having a crossbody bag is really important. I live in London. I am not one of these people that uses Uber every day. I either walk or I use the tube and public transport. So for me, I like to have my hands free, either for eating, for being on the phone, or for having a little drink on the go. I just like to have my hands free. So the fact that this works as a crossbody is a real bonus for me and my lifestyle. Pro number three is that it is durable. Now I can't speak for all box bags because they're all different. And as I mentioned earlier, I opted for, and I opted for this leather deliberately, but I went for liege leather. Liege leather is made into like a textured effect by the process in which it's rolled. I deliberately wanted liege leather because admittedly I can sometimes be a bit heavy handed with my bags. I've very much been known to put them on the floor, to drop them, to scrape them on things. And when you're spending this much money on a handbag, 
it can be very heartbreaking to just get a massive scratch or a scuff. So I opted for this kind of leather, or I was deliberately trying to hunt down a liege leather bag because I thought it would be more durable. And my theory has so far been correct because this bag has gone on the floor, I have dropped it and she still looks brand new. So liege leather for me is practical and it was definitely a good choice and the way to go. Now I'm gonna move on to the cons. And it's really difficult actually for me to come up with any cons for this bag because I wanted this bag for so long, for eight years. Eight years I had my heart set on this bag. So it didn't really give me much room to form any kind of hatred. And actually when she arrived and once I started using it, I just felt like she fully met my expectations and didn't let me down at all. So I did find it really tricky to come up with some cons. But I've been nitpicking and I have managed to come up with a few things that I would like to mention. Number one, these little metal doobries. <laughs> clasps I suppose would probably be a more accurate word. These are just borderline annoying because as you can see they're quite they're quite sharp actually and they sit at this point in the bag. Now it's worth me mentioning before I say why I dislike these that they are actually essential to being able to adjust the strap. So they are needed on the bag because it means that you can adjust the strap. However, they have a habit of moving. So normally when I'm about to use this bag, I will slide the strap to about there so that when I put this on my shoulder, they're not interfering. Or I might have them around the front, but they're not interfering. However, when you wear the bag, obviously there's movement and this slides quite freely through the little um, loops that are inside the bag that keep the strap in place. They do sometimes move. And if I'm sort of in and out of meetings and lunches during the day, then they can move and it's when they move to this sort of area that it becomes annoying because they're quite sharp as I said and if you're just wearing a t-shirt in the summer months maybe I'll just be wearing a vest or a little top they can actually scratch and they'll dig in. So that is me being really really finicky and just saying that these little things whilst also being a pro are a little bit of a con. Con number two and again, guys, I just wanna say, I'm being super, super nitpicky here. As I mentioned earlier, I like to wear the bag crossbody, like so. And it has taken me a little while to get used to this closure. Now, I think you might have seen in some of my Chloe handbag reviews, because I am a big Chloe girl, a lot of those bags have a very strong magnetic closure. And all you have to do with the flaps on those bags is lift it let it go and it will almost close itself the magnet is so strong that they will find their way to the other part of the magnet and they'll essentially just close this closure you do still need two hands to close the bag because you need to lift the flap you need to operate this little clasp which can be a little bit tricky to find the little section inside where it needs to sit in and then of course to close the clasp once you've used the bag a few times, you get used to it. But I'm just, in comparison to some of my other bags, it's not the most fuss-free closure that I've ever seen. And on to my very last con. It's quite heavy. Now, this is a bit of a contradiction because unfortunately, you cannot have the structure of the box, this shape, hence the name, without having a stiff and thick leather. Now, because this is both stiff and thick, there is a lot of leather here. There's a lot of this sort of panelling in here, and if, of course, you didn't have that, you would miss out on pretty big chunks of leather, to be honest with you. And, of course, it's a very thick, so it does weigh a fair bit, and that's without anything in it. I mean, I've emptied all of my worldly goods out of the bag already, and it is quite a weight. But again, it's a necessity of the bag. You wouldn't get this beautiful quality, you wouldn't get this sturdy structured shape without having this kind of leather. So 
it's kind of a swings and roundabout situation. Yes, it's a little bit heavier, but also it looks beautiful as this very structured box shape. And without that kind of leather, you're not gonna get that look. And there we have it, guys, my review of Phoebe. Thank you all very much for helping me decide on her name. It felt like Phoebe could be the only option as a homage to her creator. Now, if you have any further questions that you would like to know about Phoebe, do leave those down in the comment section below. And I really enjoy making these handbag review videos because I feel like they help you guys make an important decision on how to spend your money if you've been lost in after a certain bag. So if there's any of my handbags that perhaps I haven't created a review on and you'd be really interested to see, then let me know those suggestions down in the comments section below as well. Now, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.